suffer and there are two things for a journey one is the musafir the person who's on the journey the traveler and also he has to identify where he is going the destination so the destination for example if a musafir if his destination is uh, London and he has to arrive to London he wants to travel to London a very urgent uh, task an interview an important meeting. He has to go by a flight, so he estimates, I'll get there by four in four hours' time. I've got a good car. I'll use a car. And he starts his journey. He puts petrol in the car. He's got a very nice car. And he's driving fast. And he starts to travel speedily. He gets onto the motorway. And as he's traveling, he sees that the traffic starts to increase. And the speed slows down. Slowly, slowly, slowly. He grinds to a halt, long queue, and they realize that there's an accident further up. And as the, the one and a half hours is lost, then the traffic cleared, then he traveled, he's got late. Then as he started to drive faster, then another sign came, roadworks. Then some restrictions, the lanes were reduced, obstacle, cars ground to halt again. Long queue, traffic queue and more late another hour hour and a half then he carries on it's a long journey to London then on the way another situation arose then another restriction eventually ultimately when he arrived to London then his estimate was what a few hours six seven hours late he was and his interview or the task he had the meeting due to being late he failed in his mission in his objective so this is an example, a common example of the journey uh, of this dunya. Common journey that is undertaken by lots of people. But the real journey is not this journey. The real journey for us, we are travelers, we are musafirin, and that is the journey to the akhirah, the journey to the hereafter. And the destination of our journey which we have been told we are journeymen, we are travelers and our manzil, our destination is what? It is the pleasure of Allah, the rada of Allah. Allah says, radiyatam mardiyya, that when you get to your destination, you should be in such a condition that I'm happy with you, Allah says, and you should be happy with me. So this is the real objective. This is our story, my brothers. We are travelers in this way. And this is the destination we need to attain. Now, just like the journey in the world, we need uh, means. We need a car, nice car preferably, and we get everything together and we travel. In the same way Allah Ta'ala said, I've given you the means for this journey to the hereafter. Beautiful amal I've given to you. Beautiful deeds I've given to you. They are faster than the car, the nicest car. And they will shoot you really fast into the hereafter. They'll take you. Um, you've got salah, fasting, umrah, hajj, recitation of Qur'an, dhikr Allah, remembrance of Allah, subhanAllah. So these are all deeds Allah says I've given to you. These are just like that nice, beautiful, fast car. Sit into this car, into this vehicle, and go on the journey. Inshallah, when you get to the manzil, the hereafter, the destination, you will come to me in such a way, the way I want you to come to me, Allah says. Okay. So we adopt that as well, that journey, just like he took a car, nice car, for the journey, and he started his journey he got there late didn't he why was in the way barriers came restrictions came traffic came and he couldn't get there on time so we have salah fasting hajj and zakat Allah has given us all these beautiful deeds he's made us embark on the journey even then we don't arrive to the destination why just like he had obstacles on the journey in this journey there are many barriers obstacles 
hurdles. Allah has given us a warning. That on this motorway towards the hereafter, when you travel, I've given you very nice transportation. Yes? And we should see here that good deeds that we do, Alhamdulillah, we implement 90%, 99%. We do amal, don't we? Hajj, zakat, all the actions we do. Amal. How many people are then successful? Tell me. How many people? How many people will arrive to this station? Allah Ta'ala has given the sign, that person who arrives to that, there's a sign for that person. So I tell you, we'll say, yeah, yeah, we're all going to the hereafter. But there's Dalil, we have to present the proof. Allah says, if you're saying you are the people who've attained Allah's pleasure, show us the proof. Allah says, show us the proof that you've got my pleasure. So, we hear about the only Allah, the friends of Allah, pious people, we hear their names. These are those people, isn't it, who attain those levels. What's the reason they got to that position? The reason is that, just like the, the person who's on the journey, the same happens to them. There are hurdles and obstacles in this path. So when we travel with our deeds, then due to the barriers, on the, we, we can't get to the end point, to the hereafter, to Allah's pleasure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because of the hurdles on the way, we can't overcome them. I'm trying to explain simply so we understand. Okay? So, what's the reason that we have all the amal in our, in our records, but why don't we get to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why? Because radai ilahi, what is the sign of Allah's pleasure that somebody does? If we realize that this is the sign that Allah is happy with me, what's that? There's one very clear sign Allah said in the Qur'an that if you want Allah's pleasure, the sign for that is this, that whoever Allah Ta'ala is pleased with, that when Allah is pleased with His servant, then He has one quality attribute characteristic, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is happy with every action of that individual. Every action. Then He doesn't have to think, is this hard, wrong, is it easy, why did this happen, why I've got these issues. He goes beyond that. He says, Allah, whatever you've brought to me in my life, I'm happy with that. And I'm totally uh, joyous, in, uh, joyful that whatever you've given me in my life, Allah, I'm happy and content and satisfied. Allah says that if all your life you are happy... With everything I give to you, I give you difficulty, you're happy. If I give you distress, you're happy. If you are in poverty, you're happy. Allah says, I give you big challenges and tests, you're happy. So how will your Rabb be unhappy? Allah says, if you're happy with all that I've given you, then I'm happy. And then Allah says, فَدْخُلُ jannati." Then go into Jannah. And I will let you go into paradise with the good people. So now let's look at our lives. We have amal, many deeds that we practice. But have we arrived to this position that we are happy with whatever Allah has given to us in our lives so that Allah can be happy with us? Do you understand I'm saying? Let's analyze our lives. That this is not something to be scared about. We're alive, we're breathing, life is remaining. This is such a journey. This is such a journey that very quickly this journey is progressing. That a plane, if we grab hold of this point today, then within tonight, this night, we can get to the destination of Allah's pleasure. Allah says, I've given you such a great shortcut to get to my pleasure. Deen is not hard, it's very easy. It's not a long route if we understand this point today that Allah Ta'ala has explained to us. It's not hard to understand. Here, while we're sitting, we will succeed. Allah will become pleased with us straight away. Allah will announce that I'm pleased with you. So what we realize is not just amal, deeds that gives us Allah's pleasure. There's another point. It wasn't his car. It wasn't his petrol. He had everything. He had the methods, the resources, but there was a restriction. He couldn't get to his, ta- his uh, objective because there were barriers. So it's not the amal that will get us to the end point. Rather, the barriers that come on the way to Allah, we need to break those barriers down. Say subhanAllah. That's what we need to focus on. That's what we need to pay attention to. When a musafir is on the journey and he says, look, the, what's the weather? Which route shall I take? Which way should I go? The sensible traveler, if he just closes his eyes and goes blindly, then he'll get problems on the way. But if the person plans, looks ahead, looks at the weather reports, the travel reports, the traffic reports, tomorrow I've got a flight at this time. Let me see which way, which road, which route is best for me. The traveler does this, isn't it? In the same way, the servant to creation of Allah, the musafir who's traveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he's called cautious in his life. What are the restrictions that are going to come on the way? What are the barriers that will come on the way? What are the things that are going to take me off the track? There are many things that will divert me. That even when I do one sajda, Allah says that if you do one sajda to me, I am close to you. That what a great vehicle that is. So why don't we get close to Allah? Because there's something preventing us getting to Allah. There are barriers, the hurdles that we are not jumping over. We're not succeeding in overcoming these barriers. So what are these barriers? Just like the barrier that he had an accident, or somebody had an accident, or there was traffic, or roadworks. What are the barriers on the way to Allah? That's what we need to think about. 
Allah has told us clearly, those barriers to Allah's nearness are, Allah says, my disobedience, sins, sins. Yeah, you, you start the journey, you travel, you worship, but when the barriers come, the hurdles come in front of you, that are giving you the tawfiq to pray salam, but after that you commit the sins at the same time, that your car stops then, you can't drive further, because you've committed a sin, how will your car move forward? Allah says, I allow you to do hajj, I gave you the ability to do hajj, after hajj, you go back towards the sins, so how can you get to me? Because another barrier, you've, you've hit the barrier, you haven't gone past it, so the enjoyment is when a person prays salah, after praying salah, no barrier should come in front of him, he should not commit any sins. This is not difficult, totally not hard at all. And this is where we fall into the trap, and this is where we fail. That's where lots of people will fail in the hereafter. Yes, the biggest loss of the person who's on the journey, he works hard in life, and then he keeps on drowning his deeds. Ya Allah says that don't waste your deeds. Don't throw your deeds away. Allah says, oh you people of belief, I'll give you the tawfiq to do great deeds, such amal. Why do you commit sins? Why do you disobey me? Why do you shun what I tell you? If, you? if you shun what I'm telling you, if you disobey me, then the barrier will come. You'll hit the barrier, then you're going to reverse. You won't be able to travel forwards. And you'll lose out. As Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu said, that uh, Hazrat Hassan radiallahu narrated, this is a hadith to listen to, that when an individual, when a person, when he becomes occupied with unnecessary actions, Yes, unnecessary actions when he gets occupied and busy, or he makes himself busy with wasteful actions, unnecessary actions, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Allah's direction, what happens? What comes? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala, all his ma'amulat, all of his positive issues, positive affairs, they are eliminated, adab is given to him, and he is linked to munkar. To wrong actions. This is a big hadith we need to understand. That when a person does unnecessary actions, wasteful actions, actions that will not give him any benefit, then from Allah Ta'ala's direction, Allah says that his connection with Allah, that he created with his deeds, Allah says, I reject them. I reject his deeds and I break that connection, Allah says, with my servant. And I make him occupied with adab, with punishments, with distress, with difficulties. Yes, so unnecessary actions. Another sahabi radiallahu anhu, he narrated a similar hadith, that when a person doesn't do good actions, then he loses the capability to speak the truth, to do good. He loses that, that right to speak good and to do good. He goes into darkness. So my brothers, the unnecessary actions, uh, sins, to do sins, we need to leave sins, we need to reject sins, we have to do this. So unnecessary actions, there's a, a very unique point this is, we need to pay attention to this. That uh, any action we do, any task we do which is not necessary, when you become busy in that, occupied in that, what is something that's not necessary? What's a wasteful action? What are the actions that are idle, that make us bone idle? We say, okay, okay, fine, we understand that. Either. But what's unnecessary? So the definition of unnecessary action is such an action that you're occupied in, or busy in, or doing, which doesn't give you any benefit for the hereafter. That's the definition. Yes, which has no link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, it cannot make any benefit for you in the hereafter. What do we define that as? This is an unnecessary action. It can be anything. Anything. You sat down, um, or you sat down for three hours chatting to someone. Salah passes, comes and goes. So these are unnecessary actions because you are not relating what you're doing to the hereafter. You are involving yourself in things in the dunya, in the world. And these four hours Allah gave you in your life, Allah's counting the time. Those four hours you stood and wasted your time, sat and wasted your time. Unnecessary actions, better than this, was that even if you could not hear and earn for thereafter, it was better you go and sleep in that time. Say, subhanAllah. Yes, that you should become occupied in sleep at that time. At least you would have been saved from that wasteful action which would break the connection with Allah. This is the life of the mu'min, my brothers. We need to be very cautious and careful. Just this point, if we understand today, this point, that such big ibadat of ours, our worship, we can save them going to waste. We do great actions, then we go and do wasteful actions after. And this is the, the age of fitna and corruption. 
and, and challenges. And obviously when this day and age comes, then more challenges will arise. That we won't even leave the masjid's door and we'll put our hands in our pockets and we'll take things out and play with devices and waste our time. Waste our time. You see this in it? Totally it's going along with us in parallel. The shaitan, he influences us so quickly. So quickly he takes us towards actions that are not necessary. Another hadith that we need to hear, that how important is this point that we need to save ourselves from the sins. We need to prevent ourselves going towards sins. Don't be happy I've done ibadat, worship. What we need to emphasize more on the Sufis, more important than ibadah, we need to focus on is, am I wasting my deeds by committing sins? That am I using my tongue with caution? Am I using my eyes with caution? Don't go towards how much the Judah pray, tell out the Quran, recite the Quran. No. More focus should go to the other side. That am I doing actions that are wasting my life? Will I be grabbed by Allah? Sufi brothers, we need to revise our lessons to make our deen solid. We need to pay attention more towards leaving sins. The sheikhs, they look after their students, they do tazkiyah, put them towards purification. Rectification, self-analysis, such techniques they teach the student so that the student doesn't sin. 24 hours the student should be connected to the shaykh, follow the shaykh's example so he can be safe from sin. Say subhanallah, this is the objective of a khan and of a shaykh. Of a teacher, people come, they think soon as we're bayah to the shaykh, tell me wazifa shaykh, what shall I recite? What dhikr shall I do? Uh, how much shall I read of this? How many chapters of this shall I read? Subhanallah. This is not the way. The status of the Allah, He'll say, I'm not telling you to pray. Just recite Allah's name and don't commit any sins. That's the teaching of the shaykh. That's enough. Allah's name is enough. Allah's name, if it comes into your heart, there's no greater ibadah than this. When Allah's name descends into your heart, then Allah's name will wash you, purify you, cleanse you so much. That if 100 years you didn't believe in Allah and you worshipped idols, the buts, and suddenly in your heart comes Allah's name, that 100 years of idol worshipping is cancelled. That's how great is Allah's name. Is this not enough power of Allah's name to cancel? Hazrat Tanvi Sabrim, somebody said, Hazrat, that you said um, 50,000 times I recite Allah's name, sometimes 100,000, this is great achievement. Great. He said, but Hazrat, that this is the tarbiyat, this is the, the shaykh style. He said, does this mean that um, I can't see any benefit? 50,000, and what do we look at as benefit? Therefore, I'm reciting Allah's name, I've got bayah with the shaykh, I'm doing so much dhikr. We have our own standards and criterion of benefit. Ask the shaykh who you're with, what's the benefit of the dhikr I'm doing, or the dhikr I've done with you, my teacher? What will I get for this dhikr that I'm doing? What will I feel? What will I atta- attain? Because we have so much of a link with our shaykh. So he said, Hazrat, the zikr you gave me, I'm doing so much, but what's the benefit I'm getting? He said, I'm not feeling any benefit. What was the answer? Our Hazrat, my shaykh, used to repeat this statement of Hazrat Tanwi Sahib many times over. Hazrat Tanwi Sahib said, amazing, you're saying you're not benefiting from saying Allah's name? He said, is this not benefit for you? Is there a greater benefit than this? That Allah is allowing you to recite His name. Subhanallah. Allah is allowing you to recite His name, to remember Him, say Subhanallah. So I'm go and ask a person from millions of people, millions of people, they don't even know how to say Allah. And we have the tawfiq. Alhamdulillah, one and a half years old child, two years old, I will tell you, nine month year old child, I saw him saying Allah. Is this not a great na'mah? And a person who says Allah, is this not a momentous achievement? Don't we understand the fadail of just saying Allah, what are the virtues and the rewards and the virtues? They never end. They never end. They will never end. That if somebody has recited Allah's name, what have we come here to do? Why are we sitting here? I've not come here to give a speech. We aren't here for a gathering, big majlis. We're not here for no other purpose. We have no link with each other, no relationships, friendships, dawah. One objective, we haven't come here to pray salah. We haven't come here for anything. One objective task we're sat here for. And Allah knows. Allah knows our intentions. Allah knows why we've come here. Allah knows why we're sitting here. One objective task that we all gather together to recite Allah. That's it. That's what we're here for. To recite Allah's name. That's why we're sitting here, isn't it? We've got no other objective, have we? So Allah says, if you are sat here for this purpose and Allah bears witness, come angels gather together. I make you witness. All these individuals have forgiven them. I've forgiven them, subhanAllah. Allah says, is this not enough for you? And then the angels speak out loud, Allah, that's fine what you're saying, you've forgiven them. Massive achievement, brothers. 
Forgiveness is a massive achievement. Look at your faces, look at myself, I look at my own self. That can I be forgiven? Am I worthy of forgiveness? In this one, which is just because we had we came to recite Allah's name, that's how much barakah is in this name of Allah. So in the angels say, Allah, but one man he didn't come to recite your name. He didn't come to do the good, he just came to see what are these people doing? What are they doing? Let me see, he was a spy or he just came to waste time. He had no need Allah to do dhikr. He was just sat there wasting time. Allah, we have to give you the report, the feedback. So what about him? What's your, what's your verdict on him, Allah? Allah will say, my angels, this majlis so great indeed is such a... Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. Allah says, this gathering is so full of blessings, barakat, that a person comes in with any intention under the sun, even he will be forgiven. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This is Allah's name, the barakah. This is the offshoot of Allah Ta'ala's name. Is this not enough benefit that we are just reciting Allah's name? Minimum. So look at this, our Sufis, mashallah, the shuyukh, they say, recite Allah's name, but protect this name you're reciting. Don't contaminate it. So you get total 100% benefit thereafter. So your second, your second task is to follow the tazkiyah sheets, to shun the sins, to discard the sins. And this is what you get from the the school of the Sufis, I said, shall I do this? Shall I fast? Shall I pray this much nafal? Voluntary prayers. People keep on asking, Hazrat Sahib, shall I pray shirak? Shall I do this action? X, Y, Z. Just sit there with ease, quietly. No need, no need. Shall I recite this much? No, no, no. Patience. Patience. Sit down. When the time comes, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Tell me. Hazrat, so maybe I've told you this before. Hazrat uh, Mulana Taqi Sahib, Mudazala Ali, his brother Hazrat Rafi Sahib, two great personalities. When they were, when they graduated from the education, their father was a sheikh, and he sent his sons to Hazrat Arif Billah, Dr. Abdul Hay Sahib, Rahmatullah. He took both his, both his sons, Hazrat, they were both um, the sons of a great sheikh themselves, and their father, um, as a Mufti Sahib, and he took the, his sons to Hazrat Dr. Abdullah, he said, you're an alim, I'm not even an alim. He said, no, I want you to do the tarbiyah. Subhanallah. Such a great Mufti Sahib, Mufti Shafi Sahib, his sons, both alims, graduated. And both of them say that 10 years, 10 years, not one, not two, 10 years we did not have ijazam, that we could go and give a speech or a give a bayan. For 10 years after we took the company of Ashik, we didn't go and give a speech or a bayan. After 10 years, we were tested. Both brothers, the older brother says that we had a test. Then in that test, we were successful. Then we were uh, given the hint that you can go and do the khatam of Bukhari Sharif. And we were sent to Peshawar. He said that was the beautiful initiation of fairs and blessings that we got. Due to the instruction of our teacher. That time they said themselves that subhanAllah, people said that you are alims. Why don't you give a speech? That everyone wants when they've graduated, I want to give a speech and do tafsir. But where tazkiyah takes place, say subhanallah. Then that's a different vehicle that the student travels in. The tarbiyat, the rectification, the improvement, the cleansing. The teacher, the sheikh makes the student full of nur and light and pure. That he says to him, that are you capable? That when you eventually will speak, fine, you've learned the ilm, you've got the knowledge, but within you, have you got the capacity that the ilm that you've learned and Allah has given to you, that you need to revive the hearts of the makhluk. Have you reached that capacity yet? From your speaking, from your utterances, at that time the people will be affected when you overcome the barriers and the restrictions of student, when you clean your heart and your batin and your soul with tazkiyah. So what's the most important thing my brothers? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa stated, look, so another point now comes about the reward here, that the greatest maqam for a mu'min is what? Not the mu'min, but kamil mu'min, the complete believer. Not mu'min, kamil mu'min. So Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi stated, that the kamil mu'min, to be the complete mu'min, it's enough, it's enough that you shun the unnecessary actions, that's it. To be a complete mu'min, just shun, the unnecessary actions. There's no greater ibadah than this. If you adopt this ibadah to shun, discard and leave the unnecessary actions, bring them out of your life, the Rasulullah guarantees that you won't just be the mu'min, you'll be the complete mu'min, the kamil mu'min. Subhanallah. That's what we need to become. So how can a human being become a good human being? 
How can a human being become a good, a complete human being? A person whose tongue is used impurely, in an impure way, his eyes are used in an impure way, his, his, his statements are impure, his thoughts are impure. He sat in dirt, impurity. My brothers, let's come together, let's do dua on this blessed night, that let's focus on our sins, on our downfalls, on our deficiencies. Now obviously, we can't just identify our downfalls and sins ourselves. That's why we need to go to a friend of Allah, to a sheikh. To a teacher, and that's why a student should go to the teacher. Go there without any worry, no problem. Allah, I want to make a connection with my sheikh so I can bring the sins out of my life. Eliminate the sins out of my life. I want my sheikh to tell me my deficiencies. I need to be honest. I need to bear myself in front of my sheikh. Don't waste the time of the teacher. If you don't have a sheikh, then have a sheikh. Connect yourself to a sheikh. And if you have a sheikh, then utilize that connection correctly. May it not be that despite having everything, we depart from this world and we can't get to the destination, that when we're passing through the hereafter, what we want is when we die, we want to hear Allah tell us that I am happy with you and you're happy with me. Radiyatam mardiya. That's the destination we need to attain, my brothers. This is what we need to go towards. So try, don't have haram in your life, and lawful should be coming out of the life. And the unnecessary amur, beautiful definition in the hadith. One word is enough. Everything comes into this. Anything you do, looking at programs or viewing things or looking at things or doing things or saying things, unnecessary, control yourself. Grab hold of your thoughts and the best thing for that, that the shaykh teaches you, prescribes you, is the qalbi dhikr, maraqaba, dhikr of the heart. Allah has given maraqaba. Maraqaba, silent dhikr of the heart, has such a great effect. This is that method of remembering Allah, maraqaba. There are many ways of doing dhikr. Quran is dhikr, tilawah is dhikr, tasbih is dhikr. All of these are dhikr. People say, this is dhikr, that's dhikr. But there's no comparison to maraqaba. Look here. This is the first ibadah that was given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know this? The first ibadah. There was no salah at that time, nothing. What did he have? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, maraqaba. Dhikr in the heart he did. Before Salah came, meditation you can call it. Silent remembrance. What meditation did he do? Who did he remember? Isma that Allah's name he remembered in his heart. Before that, there was no Quran at that time. No Salah at that time. Just one Isma that Allah's name. That's his first ibadah he did. Allah's name he remembered in his heart. And he told that to his ummah. Say, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Such a fantastic action. Maraqaba. Silent dhikr. You can sit for hours. Hours, the fuyus, the blessings of dhikr will permeate through your body, your life. It will cleanse you, it will clean you. And from maraqba, when you do maraqba, shaitan will run, he will sprint. He will try to take you away from dhikr, shaitan. No, 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 don't do maraqba, do tasbih, recite Quran. Say to shaitan, leave all of that. My, my shaykh told me to do maraqba. Maraqba is the best, Quran is in this, everything will come into this, maraqba. The best dhikr. Oh, you're sleeping, you're resting. Oh, leave it. Say to shaitan, be gone with you. Get rid of all the thoughts. Get rid of all the whispering. Even if you're sat for a few minutes, at least 30, 45 minutes in the day, sit in one sitting. Put the clock in front of you or watch. Say, I'm going to sit here, I'm not going to move. One week, if you fight shaitan like this with Maragba, our brother used to come. New, he was new, attendee. And he said, Maragba is hard. It's difficult. He said, I can't do Maragba. Tell me a tasbih so I can do this. Now his heart was this. After 40 days when he came back, he said that the people in my house, my house folk, they're looking for me. Three hours I'm sitting in Maragba, silent thicker of the heart. They're looking for me. Where have I gone? His knee was clean, pure. And this is how I used to do it. We say it's hard. I can't sit for a few minutes. I can't concentrate. Tell me something else. Then this is weird. This is weird. That if you cooperate and say, I don't want dhikr, I don't want to cooperate with it, I'm not satisfied, it's too hard for me. Oh, just recite this, uh, listen to this beyond what I've said, request is not beyond, this is a discussion. Listen to this again, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Listen to it again. Yes, that how much result of what we're discussing uh, is in our lives and how pleased is Allah with us. Allah has given us the methodology, we need to adopt it. So what we need to try to do is that mashallah, you are pious, I'm speaking to myself, that me, I, what do we need to emphasize more on? On leaving the sins. Which sins? The unnecessary actions. Every action in this world that has no connection with Allah. It's not that I'm not drinking alcohol, am I? I'm not smoking drugs, no. I'm not talking about just the any action under the sun that has no link with the hereafter, that gives you no benefit for the hereafter, is a waste of time action. If there's no benefit of the akhirah attained from an action, then what's the point of doing the action? Tell me. What's the point of it? Wasting time. The necessities of life, eating, cooking, wearing clothes, going to work, business, these are necessities of life. 
These are necessary actions. That's not unnecessary. That's necessary. Earning, driving a taxi, working. To this extent, when you do this, after that, all your actions will be wasteful. Because deen doesn't come into the wasteful actions. Beyond these things that we just discussed. So how should we be busy? How should we be occupied with the world? One action, dhikr Allah. Remembrance of Allah. Dhikr Allah. Whenever you go into maraqab and your heart is alive due to the shaykh's teachings and your niya is I want to do my dhikr that my shaykh has taught me so I'm busy in my life I want to sit myself down and remember Allah as much as I can when you create this in your life then automatically alhamdulillah your heart every second will be busy with what? with Allah's remembrance dhikr Allah to this extent that Hazrat he stated he said I saw a man and himself mashallah and he said that, for example, the pious elders, he said someone else's name, he said, I saw another pious elder uh, in Mina. That from morning until evening, 10,000 uh, uh, dirhams worth of stock he sold. If you think, 10,000 pounds of stock, for example. But the beautiful miracle was that, that even though he sold 10,000 dirhams worth of stock, in the whole day, not one second was his heart detached from Allah's dhikr. Even when he was doing his business. Why? Because he said that Allah said in the Quran that business, children, mal, dunya, I've made you like this. Allah says that nothing in your life, your awlad, your family, nothing should detach you from dhikr of Allah. Oh, I've got wife, children, I've got a job. I can't remember Allah. Allah says that who's stopping you to do these things? But I've made you in such a way that your work will progress and in parallel my dhikr will be performed as well. So this is what Allah Ta'ala says, you, you are occupied in the world, but you are also occupied with Allah's remembrance. And the man, the true man is he, he does all the work of the world, children he brings up, his wife he looks after, he does his work, runs his business, the jara. But not for a second should his heart be detached from Allah's remembrance, he shouldn't be a ghafil. And this can only be at that time when you sit in the company of a shaykh, or you take all of the company of the shaykh, you do maraqabat, and Allah then brings you into that position. Yes, it's not by talking that you get close to Allah. It's not by telling Jack and Ori stories. This is an amali world, my friends. Amal, action. And whoever wastes, he loses a magnia today, inshallah. We want to attain this destination, and we will depart from this world in such a way that Allah is happy with us, and we are happy with Allah. We are pleased with Allah. And we can't leave the world before we get to that. May Allah Ta'ala give us an easy route to this destination. May Allah give us all the tawfiq. Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammadin Nabiyyid ummihi wa azwajihi ummatil mu'minin Wa zuriyatihi wa ahli baytihi Kama sallaytu ala awli Ibrahima Inna gumidun majeed Wa sallim tasliman daiman awadan Gazeerun, gazeerun, gazeerun Allahum fill lana zunubana wa zulmana Wa azlana wa jaddana Wa khatana wa amadana Kulla zalik indana Allahum alambana atina bin dunia hasnatan Wa billa ghidati yasnatan Bakina azab al-nar Bakina azab al-qabr Bakina azab al-hashr Bakina azab al-mizan وادخلنا جنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا لم غلا لمين يا لم غلا لمين يا لم غلا لمين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الغفار يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا لا تاتيك اللهم صمتنا للإيمان وأمتنا للإيمان وأشرنا يوم القيامة مع الإيمان اللهم إيدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم إيدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم إيدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم مستعبنا بسنته ونفعنا بمحمته وأشرنا في زورته يا كريم 
Allahumma <laughs> Kamalam bayani sahira Allahumma fillana Wale wale dayana Wa usta dayana Wa mashayikhina Wa jamiyul mu'minina Wal mu'mina Wal muslimina Wal muslima Allah hajahu minhum Wal lamwad Yurahmatika ya rahmurrahimi Subhana rambika rambil Irrati amma isifun والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين